Shannon. I'm here with Shannon and Natalie, and I'm your host, Keith Andrew, and this is the Keith Andrew Network, 249. I'm here with two beautiful women. I am tongue-tied. I must be in heaven. <laughs> <laughs> but I just want to say thank you for accepting my request. Of course. Thank you for asking. Yes, it's so good to be us. here with you. Now, I'm going to ask you guys some easy questions. And in a little bit, I'm going to pass it to you. And you can ask each other questions. And you can ask me. Basically, you're supporting a good cause. And you're making a new friend out of it. That's so right. It's a win-win. Starting off, this is for both of you. What can you tell us about yourselves growing up? Well, I grew up in Canada. I grew up on the east coast of Canada, so a really small town. There was like 900 people where I grew up, and it was gorgeous, lots of nature, really fun, but not a lot to do other than play in nature. So um, now that I'm all grown up, I uh, moved to New York, which is very different. It's the total opposite of how I grew up, but it is still really nice to go back and visit and kind of remember where I came from. Cause small little roots but a really special place so it's a fun thing to kind of get to have both worlds and i come from a very similar background i grew up in erie pennsylvania which is about 450 miles west of new york city um just a small town the town that my high school is in has one stoplight <laughs> so to kind of put things in perspective um and i always grew up i loved performing i loved acting i loved doing theater and dance <laughs> the dogs behind us. We have a dog. Um, and so when I turned 18, I said, I'm moving to New York. And I, I moved here to study theater. And I, I love New York. It's so different from the same way mm -hmm. from where I grew up. Um, but I think it's special to have both of those in your hands. No, absolutely. And what about the dog? Is he a male or female? This is Rosie. Come here, Rosie. <laughs> Rosie's very this is, concerned about this is Rosie. <laughs> she's not our dog. She's our friend's dog. We're at our friend's house. Yeah. And um, she's just a little pup that needs yeah. some love. Yeah. <laughs> Rosie's a New Yorker. <laughs> hey, Rosie. Hi, Rosie. Say hi. Hi, Keith. <laughs> she looks like the same. Is she a poodle? She's um, a Maltese. What? Yeah, Maltese. Yeah. I have a poodle. She looks exactly like that. Her name is Fei uh, Oh, Aww. so cute. <laughs> now, the next question I ask you, beautiful girls, is who were you, which one of you were party animals in college, number oh. one? <laughs> and did he ever do any sports growing up? <clears throat> um, so I, I was not a party animal. I was like a very studious girl in college and high school, and I wanted to get good grades and be Little Miss Perfect. But then after... I graduated from school. Then I was a party girl. <laughs> um, when I was when I graduated, I think I was 21 or 22, and I moved to Toronto. And then I had lots of fun and got caught up, made up for lost time. <laughs> um, and I did play sports. My because my town was so small, there was really nobody there, so you got to play on all the teams. <laughs> so I was playing basketball and badminton and volleyball. I even tried track and field, but I was terrible because I'm five foot one. So I really was bad at running and trying to jump over things but I got to do it all um and it was a lot of fun but I, I realized I was more of an actor than a sports person which is probably good for everybody <laughs> <laughs> um and so I didn't attend traditional college I attended a conservatory um the American Musical and Dramatic Academy so I didn't really have a traditional college party life experience um very similar in the sense that afterwards, um, I definitely went out and lived my life a little bit. I used to work at a tequila bar in New York City called Las Chicas Loca, <laughs> um, and we got loca <laughs> on the regular. Um, I drank a lot of tequila, uh -huh. um, but so now I don't I don't drink as much because it makes me sick. <laughs> um, but growing up, I never played. I was actually like super not athletic, <laughs> believe it or not, um, but. I guess sports wise. So in my mind growing up, like I was a dancer, I did theater, I was in choir, I was in the National Honor Society, um, but I didn't play any sports, um, which for my high school, most of the people didn't see me as athletic then because mm -hmm. that's what I did. I was also in marching band and color guard. 
um, and I marched in Drum and Bugle Corps, which is a competitive version of marching band with only brass instruments. Oh. Um, but I didn't play any instruments, I danced. Um, uh, so yeah, that's, yeah. that's my background. <laughs> All right. What about, did you guys ever get the chance to do one of those human pyramids? Sorry, not a human pyramid, girls. Oh, you cut out. I lost you. What did you say? Oh, did he ever get the chance to do one of those human pyramids? Or are you not into that? Oh, human those? pyramids, like for charity? Oh. <laughs> well, kind of, but yes. Yeah, I never did that. Um, I actually, <laughs> at my 16th birthday, I have a picture of me at my 16th birthday party with me and my friends. And like, oh. a lot of my friends were actually cheerleaders. So they were like, yeah. let's, let's make a pyramid at your party. I had my 16th birthday party at an indoor water park called Splash Lagoon. Yeah, you did. <laughs> and I have a picture of us in a human pyramid. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to have to do it one of these days. I've never done it. I'll do it at three. Yeah. <laughs> well, if you're interested, I love that stuff. I'm a loser. Oh, I love it. Well, if you're interested, maybe we can hang out one day and can you know, put it on our bucket list. That's right. Yay. Actually, if you girls do want to have fun, why not do it right now, if you're okay with it. Why not say you do like a special segment and just do it? If you want to, I don't want to impose on you. That's fun. For people, next time. We can All put right. Rachel on our shoulder. Next time, we'll get more people. <laughs> put the dog on our shoulder. <laughs> yeah, here, we'll do a pretend one. Yay! <laughs> yeah, that was perfect. <laughs> don't mind me, I'm a bad flirt, I'm sorry. <laughs> But I'm very uh, professional. I do the best I can. Yeah. Well, awesome. well, go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh, no. Go ahead. <laughs> oh, there's the dog. <laughs> <laughs> now we're going to take a quick commercial break. I'm just going to do a little plug. So I'm going to hold up my phone so I know when I do the editing, this is where I'm going to do it. Awesome. So basically, right now, I don't know if you guys are aware of Celebrity VM. No. Mm -hmm. So and I'm on there, so I give you a perfect example. You guys come across celebritybm.com. I send you my link if you would like one. I can send it to you. But um, you guys are actresses. That's why you're so beautiful. So basically, celebritybm.com. If you go to it, give me a perfect example. Are you uh, fans of Game of Thrones? Uh, how Breaking Bad, House of Cards? Yeah. So if you're a fan of any of those or professional wrestling, you go to Gang of Thrones, <laughs> Gang of Thrones You go, like I said, uh, two beautiful women's really blowing my mind. <laughs> like I said, Celebrity VM, you go, any celebrities, they're always looking for people. They have, um, I don't know any actors off the top of my head, but you know, like Breaking Bad, Gang of Thrones, uh, Rescue Me, WWE wrestlers, TNA wrestlers. I'm on there. So the perfect example is people who want a uh, endorsement from me. I would say, hey, today's your birthday. Today's your birthday for an example. And you would like to get me to say something for her. So he would say, hey, it's my friend's birthday. My friend's getting married. Can I have a recommendation? Can I get a shout out? And I set any price. I pay a charge about $20. I know I'm very cheap, <laughs> but for twenty dollars, I see whatever you want. You know, birthdays, weddings, proposals, anything you want, as long as it's not provocative or perverted. Yeah. <laughs> and basically, there's other celebrities like Dennis Rodman. Don't ask me why, but he wants five hundred. That's ridiculous. Oh wow. Uh, Brooke Hogan's on there. Um, you said you like Breaking Bad, right? Yeah. Um. We're still working on Brian Cranston and Jesse, but Cosmo, uh, Cosmo, um, Combo, Combo is oh. on there, and you can get his for twenty dollars about, unless you changed it. So that's wow. celebrityvm.com. Also, cool. the next plug is Woo Crates. I'm kind of disappointed this one because I would like to get free items, but uh. they said they would only do it if I have a thousand people. Uh, okay. Um. But anyone who's a fan of Woo Crate, they have about four, between four to five different boxes. And it's really reasonable. So once a month, you can do like, I don't know, $13 a month. And every time payments go through, you get a box. Oh. And you 
get like stuff like collectibles, sock glasses, t-shirts, videos, and Rukui isn't the only one. There's for the dog you have. There's called Bark Box. Yes. And there's um, Level like Up. And there's the 80s box. Mm -hmm. And to my last plug is for Target, for the women of time only, you can get 60% off clearance items. I know I haven't done this as a way, so I'm a little rusty. And that starts on July 30th. Don't worry, it's got to be in the description box. But if you go to my website, keyfanginetwork.com, special deals. My target's things there. But, you know, for the um, Moo Crate and the um, Celebrity VM, they don't really tell me what to promote, so I just make something up. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. Target, I do have pictures of what they're promoting. That starts on the 31st of July, ends on the 6th of August for Back to School. Now, going back to the show, I'm going to pass it back to you guys. Was there anything you want to talk about? Anything you want to add to each other? Like I said, you're supporting a good cause. You're making a new friend out of it. This is yeah. your time, after all. Do we want to talk about... Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. I'm going to let you lead it. Go for it. Okay. Yeah. So, Natalie and... Well, Natalie is one of the co-founders of this amazing community series here in New York City called Create. Um, and because of her amazing help and support, I am now a guest teacher. Yay! Um, so it's basically a community for artists and actors to show up in a room together mm -hmm. once a week, um, maybe twice a week, if they want to come twice, mm -hmm. on different topics, um, just to get people out of their own head about whatever's going on in their lives so that they can go forward in their career, in their personal lives, in any way with the best tools they can have. Yeah, and it's kind of like what you know what you're doing, which is just putting yourself out there and just you know saying I this I'm passionate about this and I want to do it and I'm gonna find a way to do it. It's sort of like a workshop that people can come together as friends and do it all together, so then you don't feel so lonely. And like you said, meeting new friends is is so much of the fun. So that's how Shannon and I came to be besties, and um, it's just so fun. Well, if it's a possibility, I, will, I would love to promote. Uh, I can't even talk. I would love to promote it and be part of it. If that's a possibility. Well, yeah, you'll have to come and check it out. That would be awesome. Now, the next question I was going to ask you guys is, how did you start your careers? And this is for both of you. So I started my career when I finished college. I moved to Toronto, and I wanted to be an actor, and so I just you know, did the normal actor thing. I got a restaurant job and <laughs> I started waitressing and going on auditions and taking classes and learning. And um, after seven years in Toronto, just working and getting jobs and going to auditions and headshots and the whole thing, I ended up moving to um, Los Angeles and I did some more trainings and I actually learned things about meditation. I learned yoga. I learned all these other things so that I could support myself doing that while I was being an actor. Um, and then after that, I moved to New York City, and I've been here for five years, and it's just been a really fun adventure, just one audition at a time. Just, you know, sometimes you get them, sometimes you don't, but, you know, it's really fun because I have friends like Shannon who's in it with me, and we can do it together and talk about it and share it, and we get to live in New York, which is really fun. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so I, I really got started really traditionally after school. I just got an agent, and I just started going out and going on auditions. And I think that, you know, you go on a lot of auditions. You get one every once in a while. There's lots that you don't get, but it's a really fun process if you have friends and people to do it with. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Yeah, it, it definitely helps having friends. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I moved here, like I said, when I was 18 to study at a conservatory um, for theater. Um, went through that program, met a lot of people through that, learned a lot about the industry and how it kind of works because coming from the middle of nowhere, I had no idea. <laughs> I just knew that I liked to perform. Um, and then once I was done with school, I did the same thing, got a job at a tequila bar. <laughs> Um, I worked there for a few years, um, and then I actually started doing social media work um, as my day job. Um, so tweeting for different companies, LinkedIn, Facebook, all all that good stuff, um, and auditioning at the same time, um, taking casting director workshops and meeting people and just networking um, and building my brand as an artist. 
Um, and then recently, um, I started doing these shootouts with people from my community. Um, so we have three days to write, shoot, and edit a film, um, which is crazy. But it's, it's super inspirational, and you feel like you're actually you're doing stuff for your career that, that you want to do. You don't have to wait for someone else to hire you or wait for an audition to come around or wait for a booking. Um, and Natalie and I are actually about to do a film together yeah. in August yeah. um, under the same umbrella of that. And so. we're playing sisters in the film. <laughs> do you see the resemblance? A little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Well, actually, one thing that did pop up that um, I can actually just go because it's off the air, I like to talk to you about. But let's we'll just keep the, to keep it moving. <laughs> Don't mind me. There's a lot of things that go in my head. Of course. So the next question I was gonna ask you, passing it back to you, was there anything you want to ask me? You know, this is your time after all. Um, how how did you decide that you wanted to do this work that you're doing? Um, there's a lot of different variations of the story that I use. So one of it is I use my brother for an inspiration. He thinks I'm an ass kisser. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, most, I guess the one that stands out the most was I was watching everyone. Everyone in my family dealt with a disability one time or another, but they overcame it and they did their own things. And I was just sitting here. You know, I got tired of using my disability as a crutch, you know. Can't go to college, I can't drive, I can't do this, can't do that. And I think the last comment season I had with my parents was, you know, talk, they were talking to my other brother. I'm the youngest out of four brothers and one sister. There, so the one before me saying, oh, why don't you go talk to your brother? He has all of these fancy connections and everything. He gave you a job. And I said, what about me? And they just basically stopped to look at me and said, what about you? And I said, you know what? Uncensored. Freedom of speech, freedom of self-expression. So I said, fuck it. You know what? You guys are going to let me do retail for the rest of my life. You really don't think I'm going to amount to something? I'm going to turn a weakness into a strength. So for the longest time, I'm using my disability as a crutch. I can't go to I said go to college, drive, blah 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 blah. I said, you know what, I'm gonna turn that into a strength. So two thousand thirteen, don't ask me why I did it like this, but it seemed like a good idea at the time. When I first started my talk show, I was only doing phone interviews. Mm. And I was still having panic attacks, I was having social anxiety and I was like, Yeah, this is not working. But during that time, people said to me, you have this great format. Why aren't you as big or bigger when you portray yourself to be? Why don't you have sponsors? Well, would you like to help me with that? No, no, if you can't do it yourself and it's not meant to be. I used to get annoyed and hang up the phone. So like, yeah, thanks a lot, asshole. <laughs> but um, one guy said to me, do it over and try something else. Try it in a different way. Thanks, you beautiful angels. We're up to 249. Wow. And still working on getting a couple of sponsors. You know, I am, well, I want to ask you this question. What's the difference between having a sponsor and being affiliated? Affiliation. Oh. I don't know the answer to that. Me either. Yeah, because on my website, it says affiliation. <laughs> I'm in affiliation. I sign up to affiliation programs as Target. I, yeah. Uh, we create, so I'm not making money off it. So, yeah. So I'm just advertising them. And hopefully yeah. Hopefully they can advertise me. Right. But still, you know, I interview actors, actresses, models, CEOs, professional wrestlers, people with disabilities, people without disabilities. I interview everyone and everyone. I'm doing the best I can with a learning disability. And you're well, doing a great job. Yeah, I appreciate it. Well, it's not, this is not about me, this is about you. Uh, I love your story, though. It's very inspiring. I think that I think that in our own lives, I think all of us and all the people watching can listen to you share and think and listen to Shannon and I talk about being from really small towns and things like that. I think everyone can say to themselves, what is the thing in my life that I think is a limit, that I think is holding me back? And if 
if you can do what you've done, then it's possible for anybody to say, that doesn't have to be a limit. It's only a limit if I say it is. And so I think that that's really inspirational for everybody listening or watching to say, what are the limits I think I have in my life and how can I take those limits and say, I'm not going to listen to those anymore. I think that's really inspiring. No, absolutely. Now, moving on to funny stories. Mm -hmm. Do you guys have any funny stories you like to share? Have you worked in retail or pulled pranks on each other? <laughs> have we pulled pranks on each other? I don't think we have. Maybe, but maybe we will now. Yeah. <laughs> you're inspiring maybe us. Maybe you're inspiring us to, <laughs> to, pull to be tricksters. <laughs> we'll get back to you. By the next time we talk to you, we'll have done some tricks, maybe. <laughs> what about any funny stories? Do you guys have any retail stories or bad er bad experiences, but it was pretty funny at the same time? Uh, hmm. I mean, I've definitely had some bad auditions, let me tell you that much. <laughs> I have had some auditions where I went in and I thought I was so good, and they were like, what was that? <laughs> that was terrible. <laughs> yeah, that happens a lot. You, yeah. you have an idea in your mind of like what you're going to do when you go in the room, and like yeah. this outfit that I picked out is awesome, and this choice that I made for this line is perfect, and then you do it, and they're like, uh, maybe you should not do that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I remember working in one retail store, that's good. I used to work for Target, and nah. I thought it would be funny to pay someone O and ones. So after I would purposely uh -huh. get rid of the fives and the tens and the twenties, so this guy had to get. I had one twenty, and he basically was forty dollars. So I had one twenty left. Here's a twenty, and I took out twenty one. So I'm twenty one, twenty two. Uh -huh. And that's why, are you serious? Is there other way you can give me more money? Nope. 23, <laughs> 24, 25. That's like, what am I supposed to do with all these ones? I don't know. Go to another store and cast them in or something. <laughs> oh, that's great. <laughs> the other one was uh, when I first started, I didn't know that I couldn't do this, but it was time for me to leave and I had a line. So I flipped the switch on the other thing and I said, Okay, the rest of the four is now closed. We mean you're now closed. Oh, <laughs> I got disability money. I can't go over 20 hours. <laughs> so I have to go. Sorry, I have to go. They're like, well, Oops. we've been standing here for 10 to 15 minutes. Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I love it. Aww. I love it. Um, I, this has been so much fun, but I'm, I, I'm afraid that we actually have to go by 3.30. So if there's any last question you have for us, or otherwise we can um, say thank you. And this was so fun. Well, wrapping up the interview segment, before you go, I do have a couple ideas for you after the show. But wrapping up the interview segment, how can people follow you on social media, number one, and going on the record, trying to tour a rank, going on the record I took from Bill O'Reilly, what was your first opinion of me when I came? I first messaged you guys, and after doing the interview, how do you feel now? I think that my first impression and how I feel now is the same. I think that I thought you were um, a really interesting, passionate entrepreneur, and I think I still think that. <laughs> yeah, and I didn't really have any no. <laughs> preconceived anything. I just. Natalie said, we're going to do this interview, and I was like, okay, great, but I'm really glad that I did it, and I'm really glad that we got to meet you, and I'm so happy that you shared your story. Like Natalie said earlier, it is so inspirational, and, and I think a lot of people are going to see your story and say, wow, if he can do it, so can I. So keep that up for sure. And you can learn about the classes that Shannon and I teach together if you go to www.createseries.com. That's the create workshops that we teach. And I, on Twitter, am Natalie Linroy. And I am on Twitter and Instagram at, and is there any more? No, <laughs> Twitter and Instagram at Shan the Ham, with two M's. 